Hi, I'm Aldias in Medium, and thank you so much for tuning in today. I want to try to bring religion and spirituality closer together, and this is what this pod is all about. I will talk about my own thoughts and feelings as I am both LDS and have spiritual gifts, something that I've had my whole life, but I always thought that it was hard to combine these gifts with my religion. This has torn me into two directions, and I have talked to many people who feel the same way. I can't choose not to have my spiritual gifts, but I can choose how I use them, and I always want to use them for good and to help others. I believe my heavenly parents gave them to me for a reason. So, this is me. Join my quest for knowledge. Tony Robbins, Day 5, Episode 3, Old Me vs. New Me. And this is, I think, it's going to be a fun episode because I learned so much about how I was compared to how I am today and how it's possible to teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> but I think it comes with an awakening of the inner self. And so it's going to be fun to talk about this. About that, I think the old dog actually wants to learn new tricks. If you can get the old dog to want to learn the new tricks, of course they'll learn. But the trick is to get them to want to learn. And so this day, I just wanted to start with what we said yesterday, and that's that every crisis is an opportunity. And um, if you look at the crisis as an opportunity to grow, you can grow spiritually, you can grow emotionally, you can grow financially. So what can I do to grow spiritually What can I do to grow emotionally? And what can I do to grow financially? And uh, life is a constant and never-ending improvement. Don't just think that you're done. That you don't need to evolve anything else. And that you're satisfied. You don't need to learn. You're done. You're perfect. And there's nothing wrong with you. Of course there are things wrong with you. Of course there are new things that you can learn. And uh, just never stop improving, never stop learning. I don't know who you're talking about because I'm a daughter of God and I'm awesome. So I think I'm pretty perfect. Sure, I have things to improve on, but I'm perfectly perfect the way I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, <laughs> what I'm meaning is that there are some people that think they're perfect and that they don't need to change at all. But that's actually not their reality because they're not really reality based. They just think they're perfect. They're not perfect. <laughs> Did you get that that this time? <laughs> you just sound so judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that um, we should never think that we learned enough and we should never think that we're perfect because we can always improve and we can always learn more. We need to be humble enough to accept that. And even though you can be pretty great <laughs> and we should embrace our flaws and we should just, if you think that you're perfect, you stop growing. So if you think that you're not really there yet, then you'll keep evolving. And I also think that there are only like three perfect beings on this earth. And that's our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Mother and Jesus Christ. So, clarity is power. The more clear you are on what you want to achieve, the more rapidly you can achieve it. And that's actually one of my problems. I have several problems, <laughs> but one of it is the problem to decide. And that comes from that I think that there are so many things that I like and there are so many things that I could see myself doing. And since I'm an empath, I also get excited about the things that other people are excited about. So if somebody starts a business and they're really excited about their business and they want to take it across the world, and I hear about it, I get that excitement and I want to be a part of it. And I can totally see myself doing what they're doing and helping them on their journey. Is that what I'm supposed to do? No. So I have to fight against myself. I get excited about so many things all the time. And it's really hard for me to understand what is it that I'm excited about and what is it that I'm supposed to do. I don't think I'm supposed to go into somebody else's plan. So I need to find out what I'm doing. And unfortunately, that comes with taking a lot of decisions. Like I have to decide what is it that I actually want to do in my life. So who will I have to become to attract and do that? And what will I have to learn to master in the next three to six months to do that? And like I said, a lot of decisions. And 
first have to decide what do I want to do and what do I want to focus on. But when you want to take that decision, you need to choose something that will give you excitement. Choose something that makes you want to smile and choose something that makes you feel like you're doing a difference. And do it in your head first. Program your brain to do what you want. Try to limit the things that you want to do the most in your life. Try to not have 50, but try to limit it as much as possible. And you know what? You don't have to take the decision by yourself. You could actually talk to other people. Talk to your spouse. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to positive people around you. I'm not saying go talk to the people that usually shoots you down or kills your ideas or mood or excitement. But talk to the people that you really trust and ask them for their honest opinion. I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? And after you talk to a couple of people, then you have an outside perspective on yourself and what you want to do. And maybe you even get some other people excited in your project. Maybe you can do it together, just like my sister did. One of the most interesting things I did, you remember when I asked you, like, I had five or six questions about me that I wanted answered. And I sent those out to some of my best friends in different kind of my life. Some colleagues, some best friends, some that I grew up with. And I just wanted different perspectives on how they saw me. And it was really interesting when I got the answers because the answers were a lot similar. And for me, that was a validation that I was on the right track. It was about my gifts and qualities and how they perceived me as a person. And it was just really interesting to see how they saw me. And even though a lot of them didn't know each other, I still got a lot of the same answers. And it was who I was when I grew up, who I was 20 years ago and who I am today. I have friends that didn't know me 20 years ago or when I grew up and just knew me for the past three to five years, but they still saw me. And that was, it was just a really interesting experiment for me. And I encourage you to do something like that. It's interesting to to see how the close ones to you, how they see you as a soul, as an individual. And it's so much bigger than just who I am on the outside. It was just fun to, to do that. Yeah, and something they said was, whatever you repeat will be true to you. And when I grew up, I had a lot of internal discussions in my head, me versus me. And the I am not enough broken record that was going on repeat in my head. I see how it's messed up the belief I have about myself. Knowing that I'm a daughter of God, but not feeling and not understanding it properly growing up. It has just influenced me in getting into bad cycles with people that has not been beneficial. So the old story that I've had in my head was that I'm not enough. And it's hard to break a story that is has been in you since, for me, the age of two, because it's really imprinted hard in you, in my core self, how I see and perceive myself. It's what you develop for the first seven years, and at the age of two, feeling that I'm not enough, and that I'm not worthy, and I'm not worthy of love. It's been really, really hard to identify that and try to break out of those kind of thought patterns, because it's been so far down in my subconscious that it was really hard to get it up to the surface to to make it conscious and to understand the patterns that I've been in of self-destruction. And so now I'm trying to imprint the new story, the new story that I am lovable, the new story that I am a daughter of God, the new story that I'm worthy of everything that I want in life, that I deserve to be happy and that I have a place and, and he has a plan for me and I have a path to walk on that can take me back to him. So it's something that you have to do every day. And in order for that to happen, you have to have it current in your everyday life. So it's really good to write little stickers to yourself, post it on the mirror in the bathroom or in the hallway or on the pictures you have. Just put little stickers to remind you of the true value of you. And the brain needs repetition, a repetition, a repetition for it to become the reality and the truth for you. So try to identify the old belief that you had about yourself and make new ones. So write the old self on one side and the new self on the other, and just see how your opinion and how your belief about yourself has changed and how you want it to keep changing. So as an example, my old story goes back also to when I was very young. 
and uh, my dad used to tell me all the time that I was really messy, I didn't put things back where they were. If there was a missing spoon in the house, it was probably under my bed, even though I didn't have any spoons there under my bed. And yeah, I didn't put the hammer back when I took it. I might not have put a lot of things back where I took it. But having it repeated that I was messy did not help me growing up and it hasn't helped me since. So the old story might be that I'm messy. The new story that I would like to become, because it's actually something that I would like to become, is less messy. I would like to be more organized. But you know, don't stop there. What actions come with being more organized? Because I have one type of actions when I'm messy, but then for me to become more organized, I'm going to need a whole new set of actions to become that new me. And I need to implement it. And if you don't know what actions comes with it, because it's really hard to know things that you haven't done before in other examples as well. So ask around. I was watching on Netflix the KonMari method and I really liked it. And it actually got me inspired to declutter the house and organize it better. Just take outside help, but write it down and don't start working on everything at once. Maybe start doing one because you want to avoid the overwhelm. The overwhelm is the brain telling you that this is too much, it's too hard and it's better just to let things be the way they are. And so do a few things at a time. It's not a sprint, it's a slow and steady wins the race. So choose one at a time, two, three, you know, you need to implement it in your life as you have it. So just don't do too much at the same time and put actions into it. Well, that was the old me versus the new me. And maybe 10 years from now, this will be the old me and I will have a totally new me. And I can't wait to get there too, because I've kind of got the bloody tooth. I don't know if they have a good saying in English for that. It's just like the dog that gets the bone and doesn't want to let go of it. That's how I feel. I've got the bone now and I don't want to let go because I'm having so much fun. But until next time, be the light, share the light, spread the light and shine. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow for a new episode. This is my journey. Thank you so much for keeping me company today. Please download, like, share and subscribe and help spread the light and spread the word to expand our community. Let's bring more love, peace and unity to this world. Take care of yourself and your loved ones. Always be grateful, kind and loving. Be brave and remember to step out of your comfort zone and smile. If you support us on Patreon, you will get access to our meditations and extra materials so you can download them as mp3. Also, we now have a Facebook group which you can access from our Facebook community. Please answer the questions as you apply to participate. It will be a safe haven where we can keep discussing religion and spirituality, our spiritual gifts and self-development. Remember, one person can make a difference, but together we can change the world.